community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. <clears throat> okay, folks, uh, this is Billy Ray Valentine going to give you a history of trading for the last 36 or 48 hours, folks. Trading in an emotional state is very difficult, and I have been going through a whole lot here. As you know, I'm planning a trip to Terre Haute today. I was supposed to leave at 5.30 in the morning. That was canceled because of the flights in Kansas City and also here in Tucson. Uh, it just doesn't work out, but I got news uh, real late last night that my brother-in-law had fallen, broken his ribs, and he's now has an infection and he's in really bad shape. Uh, he's only 78. It's uh, the only boy that my my sister Carla has ever dated. I mean, it, they started dating when they were 13. Anyway, I had to cancel all that out, so nothing else I can do about that. I was Saturday night. I went to Scottsdale to visit a client, a very, very dear friend and his wife. They were having an anniversary. They invited me for their uh, dinner up there, and I did. I got there early at 5. Uh, they got me out of there a little after 7. Just a wonderful, very, very expensive place. I mean, each person, I think it was over 250 a person. That's enough to feed a family of eight for a month pretty much around here. Anyway, I got back to Tucson. It was about 9.30 at night, and I was getting off the freeway. And out of the corner of my eye, I, I knew something was not right, so I swerved to the left a little bit, and a, a giant uh, semi had evidently missed the exit and was going off the exit ramp at about 60 miles an hour. He didn't miss me by a quarter of an inch. I mean, it could have just literally been the the end of it. And then when I get home on Sunday, the uh, the storm started uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, I think it was around... Uh, I think it was around 2.30, 3.30, something like that. And our electricity went out for uh, well over uh, 15 hours. It finally came back on and got that up and running and got a phone call from my sister telling me Michael was not doing too well, all that stuff. And then uh, <laughs> just recently, in the last hour, last Friday, one of the big things that we do here in Tucson is we try to play poker Friday afternoon and then also on Sunday. So Friday afternoon, I go down to play and uh, – a young fellow, I I don't he he doesn't he knows who I am, but I don't know his name or anything. His name was Gilbert. He sat next to me and he said, "Hey, he said I know you you play the horses and you're pretty good at." I said, ah, "Sometimes I am, sometimes I'm not." He says, "Well, I got sixty dollars and I'm going to go to the track today." And he said, "I'd like to uh, make a bet." And I said, "What track are you going to?" And he said, "I'm going to California." And I said, "That that's for tomorrow, right?" And he said, "Yeah." And I said, "Okay." I said, "What you doing? You find out." Who are the best jockeys? Okay, pick the three best jockeys and find them at a good price. Five to one, six to one, eight to one. The higher the price, the better. And bet a $12 uh, trifecta or superfecta. It'll cost you 12 to $15. I showed him how to make the bet, pick the numbers. Shouldn't take very long. And I said, all you're going to lose is 60 bucks. I said, you might get lucky and hit one of them. And if you do, you know, you're, you're going to be in good shape. And uh, so he, uh, he asked me my name and I told him, I didn't even tell him my last name. About an hour ago, he's at the front door, and after this big storm and everything, I don't, I, I don't know how he got my address. Well, I did after I asked him. I said, uh, "What's up?" And he said, "Do you know how much money I made on Friday?" And I said, "No. How much money did you make?" He said, "One of those groups that you picked paid five thousand five hundred and sixty-five dollars for a twelve-dollar bet." <laughs> and I said, good for you. And he, he offers to give me some $500. I said, no, no, no. I said, I can't take that. Anyway, I mean, I, I, this is what I've been going through one after another. I'm waiting for any minute now for my sister to call me with some with some bad news. On top of that, I've been trying to think that there's been a top of this market. I posted a chart here 
of the uh, E-mini S&P, or excuse me, the cash S&P, that has not changed. Uh, the Dow Jones one has not changed. I miss I missed something very important in the Dow Jones that I should have considered, uh, especially because I thought the top was going to be yesterday on the 17th, and it certainly wasn't yesterday. That was uh, out of the, out of the uh, the bailiwick of that. But if you take a look here at the Dow Jones, what I missed was uh, this A B C D pattern that is up here, uh, right up here where it made the high here there. Uh, 35,000, uh, almost 35,200. That was the same high that we made back here uh, several months ago. You'll see that's a big, it's a really nice ABCD, but I, I missed that one. Now the Dow Jones one is pretty much in vogue. The, the NASDAQ is still, is still correct. Uh, the Russell is still correct. And so I still think there's a chance for a top in here today, but it's doing it without me, folks. I tried it again once this morning and I, I lost, and I. That's it. No more. I'm not going to do try it anymore. For main reason is the emotional state that I'm in, going through all this stuff. I mean, I I can't handle it all. Most of it's pretty good, but boy, I still it's uh, it's really it's really rocked my world. Okay, now let's take a look here uh, at the gold market because this is one that I that I really. Those of you that get the 24/7 letter and the uh, and also the videos, you know how. How uh, timid I was about uh, taking profits in this. Hold on, let me get this up here so you'll be able to see it. Just give me one second, Al. I'm working as fast as I can here. Okay, there's the there's the gold market. You'll notice here, uh, this is a four-hour chart. This little pullback that we made here yesterday, last uh, on Friday, right there at 249 was a 382 off of that low right here. And so that I talked about that as being a really substantial low that it could be really good. I didn't cover the position, ended up taking a loss in it, and uh, that does not make me happy. But there's nothing else I can do about it, and uh, none of it was storm related because it was already moving in the right in the direction it was supposed to be going. So I have no excuses there. So I don't have excuses for anything, folks, because I put stops in for you guys, and you yeah you might, might lose two or three times in a row, but. You know, over the long haul, you know, you're going to do all right if you do all the trades. That's the whole key. So that's the main thing. Now, the big thing that we have to focus on today, it's not the stock market. It's not the stock market, folks. It's that foreign currency market because that is many, 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 many times bigger than anything that the stock market has. So let's take a quick look here. Now, this is the uh, – let's get this up here. Hello, Larry. Let's get the right chart up coming in here. This is the dollar index on the daily basis. Now, I want you to see, if you notice here down at the bottom where this D point is, you can see we made a slightly lower low here in the dollar index. And now you can see we've already rallied quite a bit. That's a relationship of the euro, which is 53% uh, of the dollar index. And then the others, the, the, the British pound, which was the weaker one, that was the one to sell. We pointed that out to you uh, last Friday. So... Let's what we want to do now is we've got a commercial coming up, but when we get back from this commercial, what we have to think about it, and this may or may not mean anything. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't, but let's take a look at what this dollar index looks like on the weekly charts because this is the one that uh, can really uh, scare a lot of people that are one way upside down or some of these markets. But there we have a perfect ABCD pattern right at the exact 61% retracement. It just doesn't get any closer than that, folks. And that's why those currencies today coming in were a sale, not a buy. And uh, they've moved, especially the Japanese yen. If you'd have done that one, you know, those big bucks up. The euros made a tiny amount. The pounds made almost uh, a thousand bucks. But that one here is pretty tough. It doesn't make up for the, the loss in the gold because, you know, we had a thousand dollar profit in that. And then our stop was hit, and that was, uh oh, don't tell me it's more. Uh, Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30 plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen, as well as many more. And he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30 year T bonds as they both influence Forex markets tremendously. 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Okay, folks, I want to talk about this uh, chart of the dollar index. Uh, There's a combination of, you know, about 22 different uh, cross rates, but basically it's the euro, the pound, the Swiss, the Canadian dollar, and the Australian dollar that covers uh, most, and of course the Japanese yen, that's number three. But those are the ones that we want to be watching. We've already showed you the Japanese yen would last week about how powerful a move that was. That one's had a tremendous move also based on those three A2s. But as you can see here, as we were setting here uh, last night, we made a slightly lower low in the dollar index. Okay, this is when the euro, and I'm going to post this up here and show you what was happening at the euro at that time because that was giving us a really strong indication that this was probably going to be it in the euro. So let me get this up here. One second, and we'll be ready to go. Shane Smolian will be our guest here, thewolftrader.com. I hope to have a couple other guests this week. Uh, maybe next Friday, for, for sure, we're going to have, uh, well, nothing's for sure, uh, is Peter Elides. Uh, Peter's on vacation right now. As you'll notice, and what is a vacation? Was, oh, that's when you take time off. Anyway, you'll notice here the 1.618. You see how it makes a slightly higher high here? This was in the middle of the night, just as that dollar index made a, a slightly lower low. There was about 25 pips. It lasted for maybe two minutes, and boom, down it went, and now it started to come down. Now, this is a very oversold market, as you can see. You, it's went a little bit higher than expected. Now, the pound, the yen have just gone absolutely. They've had tremendous moves to the downside. The euro hasn't had that yet. But this is the area where you should be looking at, just like we're looking at the stock market. I've been wrong. In, you know, I haven't been long, but I've been wrong. Anyway, that's uh, that's the name of that game. So not going to worry too much about it. So anyway, that's why you have to worry about these things here because uh, if you don't follow the three major cross rates, the yen, the euro, and the pound, you're missing a, a big deal. Now, I want to talk just a little bit about breakouts and, and running markets because we're going to have to cover that when we do our day trading session on the 2nd of uh, August, which will be a lot of fun. First, we're going to look at this is the mistake that I made in the uh, – 
in the in the euro. Uh, excuse me, in the British, the gold. One second here, folks. Folks, I have had probably four hours sleep in the last two or three nights. Uh, we had virtually no air conditioning here all night last. Which wasn't it was wasn't bad, but the sirens, the sirens everywhere in the city were just all night long. And anyway, you'll see, yes, Friday's low was sitting right at that 382 retracement. And I I said in the video that I sent out, you know, watch that level, and I didn't cover it. I just put the stop here. Of course, it kept going and going and going, went a lot higher. That's what's frustrating is that you have this position on. You're basically long during this whole area here, and then you get short this distance what it's not so bad that you take a loss but you miss that whole move to the upside because you didn't buy it and the way to buy it is when it breaks through these numbers like you'll see that 1.618 number that's up there it went fifteen hundred dollars higher than that folks i mean that's uh that's the real key to you know why we're watching some of these things and the big one was today was early this morning just look at this one here i'm thinking the market could be bearish okay it's down slightly and i mean very slightly which i should have realized by the this was before first of all i did i didn't i was not able to even see this because i didn't have electricity till later but there there's right before the opening here it's, and i didn't have electricity until about a half hour after the open you can see there was a 382 off the low we made right back here all right it was 50 percent of the low from right here and we went Wait, look at this. Every time you, if you'd have just bought when it made a new high, bought when it went through 127, bought when it went through 1618, every one of those would have been a good place to do it. And it never gives you any heat. You see, it just keeps exploding through there. We've got to cover that on that August 2nd time frame because I thought it was going to be related to the grains. It might be related to the stock market, either up or down. That I don't know, but we're going to have a lot of fun on those two days for sure. So those are some of the things that you've got to think about. You know, while you're while you're doing these uh, trades, because that's how they set them up. I don't. Uh, I try to look for two or three trades a day, and uh, when they come up, you know, that's fine. And if they don't, I just pass and wait for the next day. But today, when I came in and everything was happening, I had the one trade that I had to do, which I already had an order in on. Couldn't do anything about it, which was the uh, Dow Jones. I, I lasted maybe uh, 15 minutes in it. And then I moved on uh, to the next one. Of course, the pound was still working okay. And uh, the uh, crude oil was still working okay that I had on, which is doing all right. But I did miss that last run up in the gold, which is a, a little bit a uh, little bit scary. There's only one other chart that really has me, uh, has me concerned because of the fact it's been so strong with the Dow up that much uh, each day. I want you to see the uh, – hold on if I can just get it up here. Uh, oh dear, where is it? Oh no, no, no! Don't do that to me. I can't find my my chart on the uh, on the Dow Jones Transportation because even with all of this movement, 350 points up in the Dow, the Dow Jones Transportation has not taken out Friday's high, which is a 38-week cycle high, as you know. And I think I've got it right here, and I will show it to you in just a second. Because uh, here it is right here. Bear, bear with me here, boys and girls, and we'll get this one up here so you can see it there. We're going to have this up for you now. We made, we did not make a new high today as of yet. We still might, but we haven't yet. That, that still confirms that that 38-week cycle high is coming in here right now. This emotionalism that we're seeing in the, in the markets, folks, I believe is the Dow Jones. That's been the leader. It started off in a gang, you know, just took off and ran and ran and brought everything else with it. And uh, it's mainly I missed that ABCD on the weekly chart that was staring me right in the face and I didn't even see it. I get so con so consumed about that Fibonacci number in the cash S&P, which has not been violated by, you know, less than 1%. So that, that tells me that maybe this still could be the high. Maybe I'm grasping at straws, but, hey, I was at the same position back on March the 5th of 2009. And I remember Tommy O'Brien telling me, he said, not, not Tommy O'Brien, big Tom Sr., he said, man, he said, you've got lots of courage buying stuff down here. And I said, Tom, if it don't go up from here, I should turn in my chart pencil and get a job as a dealer at some poker room. And he, he, we laughed about that. And, of course, it turned out to be a bottom. But anyway, that's what you've got to realize, folks, is that you're going to be right, you're going to be wrong. Some of them are going to work and some of them aren't. That's basically the bottom line. Let me here's, here's something I was looking at this morning after the data came up. And I said, gee, this looks like a really interesting trade. I, I didn't have data coming in until 
what half hour or so after the after the opening. But look at this small this small pattern that we had here in the wheat. It was just absolutely perfect. Uh, the pullback this last night stopped exactly at the 61% retracement. The rally during the day stops exactly at the 61% retracement. You can't make these numbers up. Look at that beautiful A B C D to the down move. That's a 70 percent rally in wheat folks we got part of that which was good anyway that's what we're watching here today we're going to have shane smullion the wolf trader uh, dot com coming up who's done an incredible job uh, calling this bull market here and i'm anxious to hear what he has to say but with this emotionalism uh the fact i thought it was going to be the 17th eh, maybe it's the 18th and maybe i'm really 100 percent wrong but i will not not enter this until I get the break and then the retracement that I'm waiting for, then I'm going in. I don't need the pressure, don't want the pressure, not going to take the pressure. If every day in an attitude of gratitude and may God bless, let's stay tuned for the Shane man himself. Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at tfnn.com. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years of experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Okay, we're back, folks. And without further ado, I believe we have the wolf trader himself, Shane Smolian, in the house. How are you doing, young man? Good afternoon, Mr. Larry. Is this Duke and Duke? 
100 South Broad Street, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, 19147. What can I do for you today? <laughs> well, let's let's talk about the markets. Is it is it volatile, Shane? It's beyond volatile. You see this basket on my left side over here. You can see it on the end. That's where my head is. I love. I lost 150 points in the in the Dow Jones today in a trade that I put on Friday after the market closed, and because I couldn't get into my data because of the flood, or not the flood, the storm. The uh, storms. That's what yeah, the price I, I paid. Crazy. But I'm okay. Now everything's good. I, had I just been so lucky these last few days, I just I should play a lottery ticket. But let's go. Please show us what you got, buddy, because you've had some really good calls here. Sure. Well, let's start by talking about the inflation data. I, I just want to bring this to people's attention because, you know, we've been talking about this for a while uh, in terms of the economic indicators. I, di I did a webinar last Saturday about uh, artificial intelligence and how, you know, it's really important to start looking at these markets through the lens of artificial intelligence. And this is from many different layers. I mean, this is from the Fed and quantitative easing, and this is from everything down to these CPI reports now. So I've been talking about this trueflation model. And this model is interesting because it's a real-time CPI model. And, you know, it's not a perfect model. But neither is the CPI. I mean, people. I think most people agree that it's it, <laughs> the real inflation is more than 3%. But the, the point of this is that it, this model has been leading the, the government report by about two months. And I, I think last time on the show I talked about this, but I did – you know, I do think that the the actual government report will be at two percent by October, uh, and we we actually did get this three percent reading uh, the last report, and it, this was this was a this was an event on the markets, like it was a major event. Obviously, it's been pushing higher on this report, but this was not really a surprise because we had been tracking this. I actually spoke with. Uh, a few people about this months ago too. They were asking me about inflation. I said, well, you know. Inflation pretty much uh, follows the M2. I mean, you have other issues, supply chains, and all these th other things that come into this. But in, in in reality, that's the big driving factor of the inflation. Of course, you know we know that when we go to the store and healthcare and housing and rent, it's higher than three percent. But this is what they're reporting. And so, if we want to be able to uh, predict what's going to happen, uh, I think it's useful to at least consider some of these models. Now, of course, the Fed has a much better model than this. Uh, but just something to think about because in the past, you know, we really didn't have this advantage to be able to look at this data in real time. And uh, so now it kind of gives us an advantage as uh, on the on the you know the side of the the retailer or the consumer that we can actually see this stuff in real time, uh, whether it's accurate or not, it's actually leading the government report. So that's going to help us understand. Uh, get a better idea of where we're going with this. So it wasn't really a surprise to me that we saw this 3%, although it was to a lot of the market analysts. And I do think it will continue to come down. Now, the one thing that I do want to point out to people is that I came, I think last time I was saying that I thought that would be this big surge when we hit the 2%. I think this might have been the big surge that we just saw because the big shock came at that 3%. And if we really are at 2.1% right now or 2.2%, According to this model, again, I know the model is not perfect, but let's just say this is the model and the government's following this. If we're, if we're at 3% right now, and there's really not much more room to go here. I mean, we're talking about 0.8%. So that might have been the biggest shock that we just saw in terms of like a euphoria, a positive sentiment, blow up type rally. So um, I think that, uh, you know, maybe maybe this was the actual blow off here in terms of the, the the positive sentiment because the sentiment is through the roof right now and so we you know i do consider this at times i think you know i i did feel that this was going to be the sentiment because a lot of these numbers are coming in worse now the the uh the retail sales came in a little bit worse and i like to personally follow the blogs i like to look at the blogs of these people that go through these theme parks right so i i feel like that's a good pulse of middle class consumer. And this is the first time, Larry, that we're actually seeing Disney World empty and we're seeing Universal Studios empty. Now that's uh, saying a lot in the summertime because during Memorial Day and, and 4th of July, that's usually a busy time for these theme parks and there's nobody there. It's a ghost town. Uh, I know some people, I mean, they've been raising the prices like crazy too. And some people feel that people are protesting Disney 
for all of this woke culture and all this stuff. But I think it's more than that because Universal is down too. So I, I think these are things to look at now. I think the economy is slowing down. Uh, I don't, you know, there's this euphoria now that nothing bad is going to happen. It's a soft landing and all this stuff. But I don't think so. I think we're starting to see some real slowdown now in this economy. Now, this CPI report, I, if you extend this out, uh, I, you know, I felt I've been feeling since February, March that we would be at 2% by August. And so that this model is showing around 2.2 right now. I do think we'll hit the 2%. And then if there's a two month lag, that means that the government will report 2% right around October. So again, this is just uh, another tool to, to consider, but I think I think we should look through everything as much as we can now through the lens of artificial intelligence and real-time data, uh, because I, I guarantee you the Fed has a better model than this that they're looking at. And that also means that, that we can kind of think about what their moves would be into the future. Like if they know that the inflation has been coming down, you know, that's gonna help us understand what they might do in some of their next meetings. So that's just, that was just a little topic that I wanted to bring up to, uh, to kind of put it out there and put it in people's minds that maybe we should change how we think about things a little bit uh, because the world is changing. Now, if we look at the S&P here, um, S&P is still pushing higher, of course. Uh, you can see that we've had these series of, of higher lows here. Uh, same thing with the, with the NASDAQ, the 50 is still above the 200, it's pushing higher. NASDAQ's pushing up to the 786 level up into here. So this is really getting very close to the all-time highs again here. So this has been quite the impressive rally uh, on both fronts, on both the S&P and the NASDAQ here. So that is still pushing higher, of course. Uh, I do have the Wolf Trader wave. Now, I had talked about this before. Uh, this is a, a wave forecasting model that I built uh, based upon, the, the, you know, I looked at the positives and the negatives of many different wave counting systems. And I came up with my own concept here. And so this did hit a high on July, on the uh, the week of July 7th. And it's con it's confirmed down till August 11th. So this says that we're, you know, this could still be heading down. And so I just want to caution people about that, that I think we are overextended here. Uh, when you look at this on multiple fronts, uh, we are really stretched here, really stretched. And we have that positive euphoria to go with it with that CPI number. So I think everything is in place here uh, for some type of a medium term high. Uh, the NASDAQ, of course, is still outpacing the S&P on a relative basis. And then we had looked at, I look at the VIXI and I like to look at this as a Paris trade with the S&P. This has been long S&P since March 22nd. That's, that's a long time to be in a signal. Uh, and the VIXI is pushing down to extreme levels. Now, I don't look at extreme levels so much. I do look at the Paris trades, uh, but at some point this this will turn. In my lifetime? <laughs> I think so. Hey, I wanna ask you a question when we come back from the break. We'll be right sure. back with Shane Smolian, folks, wolftrader.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. 
Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Okay, we're back with Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Shane, you mentioned that there's not very many crowds at Disney World and stuff. Yeah, it's empty. The, the waits. I, I, I watch the blog. I, I like to watch the blogs because the people walk through the parks. I don't like to watch the news reports or any of this press release because it's all, you know, they they exaggerate everything. And they're making excuses now. They're like, oh, well, you know, it's hot now. Well, well it's hot every summer in Orlando. <laughs> I, don't, I know there's yeah. a heat wave, but, you know, it's the prices are high. But the, the point is, it's not just Disney. It's it's Universal too. And in their they're empty. They're like ghost towns, uh, which which is wow. very strange. And I just, you know, I used to have annual passes when my daughter was small. We used to go three or four times a year. And every time the economy would slow down, I would see the crowd thin out a little bit. I would kind of, I, I would use that as like a pulse. I've never seen this before, Larry. I mean, there, there's there's nobody there. I mean, it's the middle of the summer. And yeah. um, yes, there's times when you, there are people there. But what I'm saying from terms of Disney, like usually you can't walk. Um it's, it's thinning out, I guess you could say. It's for Disney, it's thinning out. So just just something I wanted to point out about the economy. I think it's it's something to you know pay attention to. Uh, it's something that I have watched in the past as a barometer, and I think you know just something to think about. Well, I know that Disney Senior World has fewer wheelchairs and walkers than normal, so maybe that's the same reason. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. You know, when I worked at Drexel, this is an off thing. If you did really well with Drexel, you got a, what we called a Disney pass. It was from Roy Disney and Laura Disney had their accounts at Drexel there in Beverly Hills. If you did really well, you got a bonus that when you went to Disneyland for a party of four, you never had to wait. You walked right up to the front of the line. And uh, that was always on a birthday and stuff. It was really special that you didn't have to wait for things because I, I hate that stuff, you know, like that. And hey, let's just get talk about the markets. They're roller coaster enough for anybody. So sure. let's get back to the markets, my friend. Okay, well, so we have been talking about the Fed internals. This, this went into a buy back on October 28th. And this is really when I saw this big change of character in the market in terms of what's going on with the Fed. Now, this has been rising for some time now, this market. It's been choppy. A lot of people have pointed out that this is, if you're a, like a, a wave person, this is more a corrective type of behavior. I know you have a lot of uh, wave counters come on the show. This is still definitely more corrective behavior here. Now, we've had a series of geomagnetic storms here. Um, really hasn't done too much damage compared to what it did last summer. I mean, we just had one last night, and it, it just ignored it today like it didn't exist. Now, a couple of things. The Astro is negative right now, okay? There, the market, there's no doubt, pretty much no matter how you look at this, uh, from multiple models, you know, there's this Venus retrograde coming, there's the Saturn cycles, there's the transits. I mean, there's many different planetary speed index. It's negative. But I know that when the Fed is strong, the, that the market can ignore these transits. It can just keep going up. We're starting to see something here that I haven't seen in a long time, which is a big negative divergence forming on this Fed juice here. And this is a cause for concern. So back here on uh, June the 1st, 23, 
you can see the Fed internals peaked out here. And they've been falling ever since. Now, it looked like it was trying to hook up, but it's still falling here. When this happens, the market comes back to meet that point where that divergence starts. And that's about 42, uh, 4278. This is the first level that I think we're going to come back to uh, once this market gets out of la-la land here. Uh, but I, these are, this is a very reliable uh, divergence that I've followed. And I think this is going to be the level that we're coming back to first. And then there are a series of gaps in here going all the way down. Uh, down to the 4200 level, down and even well down here into this 4000 to 4100 level, there's a series of gaps that um, are at some point they're going to fill. So, you know, we still haven't turned yet and the market's still pushing higher each day. But the, this is a cause for concern because if you don't have the strong Fed juice behind it, and the Fed juice, by the way, it's still in a buy, but there's an erosion happening under the scenes here. And so when that happens, you can get sudden drops, you can get these waterfall type of quick reversals on the market. So I just would tell everybody right now, be very cautious on this market. This is not the time to be long on the market. And you guys know that I've been bullish since, you know, October and I, you know, very bullish just I was long the Nasdaq for a long time. This is not the time in my opinion to be long on this market. Uh, there's a lot of, of danger signs here. So uh, just be careful. And even everything from, like I said, that euphoria concept is something to be concerned about. Now, I do have the, the regular, the Fed use here, which is the neural network. This is the actual trade signal here. This has been in a buy since 420. Uh, but with those internals eroding like that, I think there's a good chance that this Fed use, this is going to go into a sell at some point here, I think in the next few days. Uh, the planetary speed, speed index is in a sell. The quad lunar cycle is in a sell. The polar R squared hooks in a sell. I mean, you have everything here giving you a warning sign to be careful on this market. And again, if I don't see the support from the Fed from those internals, I get very suspicious about the market here going forward. So the planetary speed index, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is a this is a, uh, a composite that I use to track the speed of all the planets. And I also include the hypothetical planets, the Uranian planets. And this gives us an idea of the flow of the market. Uh, and the market tends to flow. When the planets move fast, the market tends to go up. When the planets are slowing down, particularly when we have a Mercury station or stationary planets, it tends to fall. This is an example of the 1987 market crash here, and you can see the planetary speed index is in this uh, continuous sequence here where it's falling and falling, and then during the biggest fall here is when the crash occurred in 1987. And there, there were some other markers here, I guess you could say, like the Mercury station and the Venus-Uranus hard aspect. But this is a good indicator, and this is falling too. So if I, if I look at this planetary speed index right now where we are, it's falling. And so it's been falling for some time since July the 4th, uh, J July 21st, there's a low, it comes back up and then it falls again all the way out into mid August and August since 2010, August has actually become one of the worst months, uh, for the markets. Uh, October is still traditionally one of the worst, but August is not a good month. So I think, I think we are not out of the woods here on this market. And again, I don't, I just, I don't think this is a time to be long on the market. And and believe me, most of the time I do think it's, time to be long on the market. Larry, you know this. I come on the show and I'm bullish all the time. Yeah. This yeah. is just not one of those times. And um, so I would just caution everybody uh, to be just to be really, really careful out there uh, if you're long on this market, because I think there, there's a lot of warning signs here on this market. Now, long term, I do think that uh, this this has the potential to, to, to be headed higher. Uh, but in the short term, um, I think because we have all of this declining astro and because you know we have these internals that are eroding here uh this this to me says that there, there, we're you know there's a good chance we're going to come back to this level first and then whether we keep going down from there is really going to re remain to be seen but uh this is this is a time where like i said everything's kind of on the plate for for a like a like a blow-off type of a, of a scenario in the market so just just be cautious out there for sure Caution's my middle name. All right. Um, geomagnetic activity. So these are some recent storms here. Um, they hadn't really been doing too much. We had some G4 storms. They did stop the market rally. We had a G2. We just had a G1 storm here. The market ignored it today. It went higher. Uh, we just had this full moon perigee, although the market is still pushing higher here. But, um, you know, once we get out of uh, let me just point this out too. Once we get out of July, 
July is the low point for these for these uh, geomagnetic storms, and then it starts to pick up again. So August, you know, last August we got some pretty big storms that came across uh, that pushed the, the market was trying to rally back up, and it got slammed back down again in August. And then when we get into October, um, that's going to keep rising again too. Listen, stay with us, please. Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. We'll be right back, folks. 877-927-6648. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Yeah, we're back on the air with the cycle master himself, Shane Smolian, WolfTrader.com. Uh, Shane, we've got a question from one of our listeners about the election cycle. You, can you comment on about that? Well, generally it's positive. That's the thing. Generally it's positive heading into an election year. I I do think that at some point we will head back up higher and make new highs. But in, in, what I'm focusing on right now is, is the near term. Um, but generally it is positive. And I think heading into 2024, that, that is, it's positive. But right now in the short term, not so much. Um, now this this chart here is is a chart from last summer. This was the last time that we had a market that looked like it was never going to stop going up type of a thing like we see now. And we had that full moon perigee. Now notice here we got a G3 geomagnetic storm right at the high of that. Now we've been seeing these little storms come like these little G1 storms. I think if we get a G3 storm or higher, it's going to be serious trouble for this market for the for the for the S&P and the Nasdaq. And I think there's going to be a good chance of of a decline. So 
the intensity of the storm plays a lot into this. Usually you need a G3 or higher to really turn this market, but we have a similar setup here. So I just want to put a word of caution out for everybody. I also have a um, combined Saturn cycle uh, that I've been looking at. And this thing peaked out in early July. I know that the market's still pushing higher, but this is still on the decline here, guys. It's going to keep falling and falling and falling for a few months here. So again, when I see a, when I see a Fed that's weakening, and I see the Astro that's falling. It's it would only take one one or two big ge uh, geomagnetic storms to really send this market lower. So just a word of caution out there to everybody. Hey, listen, my friend, you did a great job. Thank you very much. We'll have you on again soon and live every day in an attitude of gratitude. And may God bless and keep those cards and letters coming in, Shane. You do a great job. Your 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 webinars that you have every weekend are just spectacular. So I hope folks pay you know, a chance to watch that. But stay tuned. We'll have you on in a few weeks. Okay, my friend? Thanks, Larry. Have a great day, everybody. You bet, folks. We'll see you tomorrow.